welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Uh, if you've watched my other show, uh, Talk and Roll, you will remember these fine guests over here. Uh, they are from the uh, synthwave duo, Brighter Than a Thousand Suns, because I'm not screwing it up this time. I went back and re <laughs> I'm not doing it this time. I'm not screwing it up. Uh, <laughs> Although, although I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Last night I filmed my my Saturday morning cartoon show and my Friday night, and uh, I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of having a uh, a manic moment, you know, a little, little. And uh, and then I watched it back. And I'm like, oh, I feel like a crazy person. And I'm like, you know what? I'm leaving it. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's all good at this point. So, um, for those who aren't aware, if you did not go to talk and roll, uh, tell us about yourselves, guys. Oh, where do we start? Uh, well, synthwave. We like we'll say synth pop uh, band. Yeah. Um, uh, we've been around for a long time, but uh, we were metal before that. We've been together since two thousand seven. Um, switched to synth pop on and off over the years, and now that's the committed direction. Yep. Stay um, the course this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Just uh, straight up eighties. Uh, you know. Funk, synth, pop, I don't know. What else What else do you want to say? It's, it's like, it's like if, if historically accurate modern synth pop historically that accurate. wasn't just nostalgia baiting. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, we're, we're nostalgia historians. Is that, Dude, that's it. That's what we're going to say we are. Not going to call it anybody else. Nostalgia name. historians. That, that, I, my wife oh. keeps telling me to do that. She's like, you, you should really do a show where you, I'm like, because I talk about my cartoons and stuff. She goes, you should really do a show where you do that. And I'm like, I don't want to do another show. I, but I probably <laughs> looked down the road. So what do I do? The other day I added a fifth show and I'm like, why oh do my I God. do that? Wow. Nice, dude. Wow. I, I, it's it's going to be my, I'm going to do it like twice a month. It's going to be a special thing. I'm putting it just on Patreon for my Patreon followers and so they can go see like uh i'm calling it i call it like the the uh afternoon uh the afternoon special i was gonna do it the after school special but that's already taken so oh. <laughs> but uh no I, I it's it's cool that you guys are bringing back the old school synth pop and with a new twist to it um we just went and seen uh nightclub saturday night um oh yeah yeah and um, I'm sitting there because everybody's like, well, how do you describe them? I went, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I was like, goth synth pop, maybe, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that exists. That works. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it pretty much, you, you you put three words together with synth in it. You can you can make sure. That's, that's a genre. That's a genre. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I forgot to ask you guys last time when you were on you said that you were really close to getting on a label with uh um was it fix it fixed or um the the, yeah. synth, the yeah. synth thing um yeah. they put a lot of good stuff but how how did that fall apart if i could ask oh uh, well um <sighs> are you okay yeah, yeah, it's funny. We have uh, we had this um, one gal from our old label, Tragic Hero Records. Uh, she was kind of doing some PR for us, and uh, I just asked her out of the blue if she knew anyone in the fixed camp, and she knew this guy uh, that she, you know, got us in touch with. And it, he said, you know, it's funny because Clayton, the cell dweller guy, mm -hmm. um, said that he saw our song Aphantasia. And he's like, I, I, I really like them. Want to reach out to them? So they're like, we were just inches away from reaching out to you. Um, I don't know how detailed we should get with all this, but uh, um, back and forth a little bit. Um, wanted to do a deal. We said, you know, I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna stay in independent. Not that it was a bad deal, just we knew where we wanted to head with uh, with our music, and we thought to ourselves that may that might not be artistically speaking the best home okay. i love a lot of people on there huge respect for cell dweller like the annex for example um and we were just like you know we're gonna we're gonna back out then the guy we were in touch with said well look why don't you why don't we work on just do a single see how you feel we'll do a single and uh and then uh then Clayton asked us to do a remix of a cell dweller song 
So we did that. And we we're like, all right, cool. Um, and we re-released -re that song that he liked, uh, renamed it Future Blind and did a kind of a revised mix on it. Um, then it was like, okay, well, maybe we, maybe we can do a deal after all. And it sounded like they were on board with the kind of direction we wanted to take, which was a lot more, as we, she said, historically accurate 80s stuff, yeah. which is very different from the kind of polished uh, synth sprinkled metal that they really focus on. Yeah, we yeah, shifting yeah. away from metal. And we're, we were trying to tell them, we're not going to be doing that. That just mm -hmm. make sure we put that out there. He's like, no, 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 that's cool. We're going to, we let's go forward. And we we're getting, we're going forward. And then, uh, then just kind of last minute, they were just like, yeah, yeah, maybe that's not the best. Yeah, because during the time um, that we were in talks with them the most, it was a more transitional period for us where yeah. we were leaning okay. much more on like the industrial side of things. And it would have fit a bit better. It may not, it may not have been perfect, but it wouldn't have been such a square peg in with the rest of their roster, even on their more electronic label side. I forget the okay. name of the, okay. the sub label. Like Fix Neon was the other neon. thing, but they okay. were more synth wave. And we were, yeah. as she said, kind of more, uh, I'll say authentically, or uh, like she said, uh, historically accurate 80s. Right. Okay. We don't really care that much for most synth wavy kind of things. Um, and we were like, well, we really want to do the sound. So yeah, yeah. And it just, you know, it okay. became obvious that it wasn't going to work out. Yeah, because uh, so. I, I went back and was rewatching a little bit to the the past episode, and I was like, I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, I would, I think you would fit. And then, but I had I had to get your guys' <laughs> story. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. But the uh, decision to to not work together was was very gracious on both sides. Though yeah. like, there wasn't like, oh, you guys suck. No, you guys suck. It wasn't yeah. anything like that. Okay. It was very amicable because there wasn't even really a split to begin with. It was just a we all yeah. decided to decline each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, okay. So. okay, we first to them, and then them, them to us. And, you know, <laughs> <Stay back>. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it, it's it's cool that you guys are doing more of the uh, um, hi, I, I, historically accurate synth synth pop um if that, if that sounds too yeah. corny i don't want it to sound too corny but yeah yeah, yeah. it's well i'm sitting it's here partially invest. yeah a, a few years ago i was you know during the pandemic sitting around the house and uh i got really back into finding old sci-fi and horror movies that i had you know just weren't streaming you couldn't find them anywhere um so I started looking. I end up buying a, a, a region free Blu-ray player because some of the stuff's not right. not available in the United States. And I was like, all right. So I started watching, and I'm like, God, he's had such good soundtracks with the synth. You know, I'm like, sitting there, what? And I'm like, going, man, what happened to that? And I'm like, so I'm like sitting there trying to find, like, oh well, you know, Sirius Radio has a channel for everything. So I literally get the list, and I'm going down. I'm like. Okay, there's nothing for that. And then um, I found uh, the first one was Gunship. was the first synth, you know. And I was like, okay, I'm digging this. Then I started going down the rabbit hole and finding all these other bands. I'm like, oh, he's, he's been around forever. What the hell? What did I miss? And I was like, start getting it more into more and more and more. Then I start finding the old school stuff. And then I start finding the new stuff. Then I start buying soundtracks. Then I start <laughs> just awesome. sort, of, sort of snowballs because, you know, it's like, oh, I miss this. I love this. <laughs> and my yeah. wife said, her, she goes, you're never, ever going to leave the 80s, are you? I was like, probably not. <laughs> I'm just stuck here. <laughs> Why would you? No. You know? We, yeah. We, we, um, I had a discussion a couple nights ago. One, last, last night, actually. I did an interview with a, a girl from a new band and we were talking about when she found music and I was like can I ask you how old you are when you got into your music and it's like 13 14 and I'm like okay because the I started looking into this and it's like a um psychological thing that you are kind of set at 13 14 so your taste in music are kind of set your taste in in uh, uh movies is set it's like it's like all these things are set at about 13, 14. And I went, okay, that seems to track when it comes to me. Uh, <laughs> right, right. And uh, I was like, I still play Dungeons and Dragons. I still play video games. I still collect toys. I still listen to the same type of music. I still listen. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. 
I legitimately drive a 1985 Crown Vic. Uh, nice. <laughs> Do you really? Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, Holy that's my, that's my wow. second car. I have two cars that I drive pretty normal. I have a 2007 Dodge Magnum. And then my other car is a uh, 1995 or 1985 two door Crown Vic. And uh, they made him two door. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. One of my one of my good friends bought it, and he drove all the way up from three hours to go to Cleveland to go buy this car. He gets all the way up there, rose colored glasses, gets back. The guy's like, "Oh, it's a solid car. It's beautiful." Blah blah blah. And it is. It's a decent solid car, but there's rust spots in it which the guy kind of hid and uh, my buddy got kind of mad he's like do you want to buy this and i'm like sure and he goes well how much does it cost you to fix this i'm like nothing my dad's a welder i was like literally i'm just gonna go out there cut the holes in there patch all the weld holes and everything is like they're talking thousands and i'm like what's it gonna cost nothing i'm gonna do it for free and so wow. i bought that i drive that around um in my garage, there is a 78 Camaro. In my driveway, there's my 82 Camaro. Awesome. I, I've decided, I kept messing with it. I'm going to start tearing it apart this summer. And I think I'm going to go and I'm going to Mad Max it out. I'm going nice. to. Nice. Yes. And I'm sitting there staring at it. I'm like, oh, it's got, you know what? Not going to worry about the rust. I'm painting over everything flat black. I'm putting, I want my dad build me a guard for it. So it looks like I'm going to build a Mad Max Camaro. Oh my That's God. That's great, dude. That's you got to take pictures and send them to us. Oh yeah. I'm, it's uh, Hopefully, I, I hope, I don't know if it'll be done this summer. I want to at least get it up and running real well for the end of summer. Have my dad start working on the, on the uh, guard. Uh, start figuring out how I can do, I want to make the big, like fake looking gas tanks when I get rid of the, uh, the hatch and the whole night. <laughs> but, wow awesome that's gonna be sick oh yeah but it's it, it, and my wife was we me and my wife were making funny because she's she's still stuck a little bit in the 80s she loves her music she loves you know she still loves david bowie and labyrinth uh she likes you know the, the movies <laughs> the music and uh but cars she wants the newest car and i'm like i i have no intention of ever buying a new car ever I could, I could really? be a millionaire, and she'd be like, what are you buying? I was like, I found a 1982 Trans Am. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I had a, I had an 84 Trans Am and an 88 Firebird. I have, uh, let's see. My, mine is, I had one Firebird, and I sold it because I was broke, and I should never got rid of it. I had a 79 Firebird Trans Am, uh, but I had a six camaros so i've had yeah. wow dude yeah well my, my final wall was a mechanic and his favorite car was a was a camaro so we just matter of fact the, the 78 was his and now it's going to be it's in, it stays in the family i got to work on it whenever i get a chance but it's sitting in the garage wow uh, got it but it's a lot of cars you got us beat i think we've i mean we always thought we had a, we owned the, used to own a lot of cars but um i, I own a lot of cars yeah dude wow yeah because i own a lot of shit cars <laughs> <laughs> yeah man that, but you got the cars coming out the ass it's well, crazy it what was it comfortable <laughs> they say most the average person owns eight cars in a lifetime i was like i've owned That's eight cars in a year <laughs> <laughs> yeah man wow. i think i've owned eight cars if you count i mean you know we we're we're rocking a 2018 Nissan Rogue, so you know. I know you have real, right? real nostalgic, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. You, you got to have room because you got all the the band equipment you got to take everywhere in the Rogue. Oh, yeah. room, but I don't think that's all going to fit in that car. Nope, nope, nope. I I, I know I know uh, a couple guys that do comic book conventions, and they could fit a ton in a Rogue. And I was actually surprised oh, yeah. how much you could fit in a Rogue, and I was like, okay, it's impressive. So. Um, I know the newer one is a little bit bigger, and the one we used to have was bigger. But yeah, yeah, they shrank it for a few years on this model, so yeah. you know. But <laughs> it's a great car, though. Oh, okay. I have a, I have currently right now the '85 Crown Vic, the '82 Camaro, the '78 Camaro, my '07 Magnum, and my uh, my convention van. So it's like a literally like a 2011 van that i bought from when my wife worked in a nursing home so i got i use that for conventions it's got lift on it so i can just put stuff on her put it in the van, drop awesome. the van. wow you have fun man holy cow 
Yeah, because well, it, it's one of the ones where I'm getting old. I get tired of lugging stuff in and out of the van, and the lift makes it easier. That's awesome. Yeah, we got to get, get a van with that. That'd be awesome. What yeah. you need to do is Mad Max out the van. Yeah. Because that would be way cooler, dude. Oh, but, but the, the big tires, the big, big. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But, but then it's, when you it's, call it the conventions. Oh, yeah. It, you, you, you got it down to, you know. Right off the gate, they're going to love it. She had to yell at me the other day because I was going, hey, I found a 68 Ford Econoline van. And she's like, what? And I was like, it kind of looks like the Scooby-Doo mystery machine. And she goes, that's awesome. No. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, Great. you already that's have really so awesome. many cars, you don't need another one. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I'm trying to find, because like right now, I, I'm, I'm, my goal is, uh, to 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 expand my comic shop, I want to put an arcade in it. Uh, I've been buying arcade cabinets whenever I can, and uh, I want to buy find a building with like a um like a bay so I can pull cars into it so I can like load in. I don't have to load out in and out in the winter time and all that fun stuff. But I was like, yeah, then I could put all my tools there and park my cars and work them. She goes, you'll never come home. She goes, you put a studio in there. She goes, you'll be yeah. working. There. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, as we were talking, uh, we wanted to talk about growing up uh, in the 80s and uh, being stuck as 80s kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Forever and ever, amen. Right, right. I, 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 I love it because, well, uh, um, oh man, is it, it's, um, oh geez, I think it's uh, um, Ray Bradbury says just because you grow older doesn't mean you have to grow up and it's it's i beautiful. love that um i i've had friends i have friends that he goes when are you gonna grow up i was like uh i don't know i don't plan on it i was like when they put me in the ground i guess <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome man yeah. I, that's uh I just actually shot a little mini video talking about a quotation from ray bradbury uh, one of my favorite authors but uh anyway yeah man i mean well, that's, again, I think we talked about this a little bit last time, the beauty of where we are today and yeah. how niche everything is, everything, everyone's niching down. Um, you can find community for the things you love. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like anywhere, you can find it. There's a place for you. And it's like, oh, yeah, man. I mean, I don't know if, you, if you've seen around here, I'm looking around, you know, there's Masters of the Universe posters, old NES Sega Master System posters and stuff like that. Um, and people will see it and, and, you know, like it's not even just, oh, remember that. Because it doesn't go away anymore. Things don't go no, away. And it's no, a beautiful thing. It doesn't. It, it's it's very much a, you know, if you would have told 13-year-old Paul in junior high that at one time you were going to be able to watch every cartoon you've pretty much ever watched, you could watch any, you could listen to any music you ever wanted to listen to. You, I, I joke around. I was like, I'd have been a like a nine hundred pound shut in because I would have never left my house. I'd have been playing D and D via Zoom with my buddies. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, man. Media sandwich. No, we're we're no longer a culture of scarcity, and uh, that's no. what brings us together. Oh, and I think in some ways that almost could lead to like, you know, no longer being a culture of nostalgia. Like, I feel like our generation and maybe maybe like into early Gen Z. We're the last generations to experience nostalgia for things that we actually experienced. Yeah. So now you have very young people, 12, 13 year olds who are nostalgic for the eighties. It's almost as if they weren't born in a time that gave them anything to be nostalgic about because <laughs> everything has moved so much quicker yeah, than it did for us. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, my kids, my, my two middle boys love a lot of stuff that come out of the eighties. They got into synthwave. They like certain video games. They like certain comic books. Um, my my son, he was born in ninety nine. He'll be twenty five. Wow. He, wow. He loves eighties comics. Nice. And it's because he he grew up reading my books. You know, I was never one of them dads who was like, you know, yeah, yeah. If it was a thousand dollar book, he's like, N -n 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 here, read the trade paperback. Uh, you know, you're not yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I've always presented everything to them. You know, they grew up playing with my toys, you know, because I was never one of them dads. You know, if it was sealed, packaged, whatever, it's like, no, nah, maybe here. Here, well, hold on a second. Let me get the box of G.I. Joe's out for you. Uh, nice. <laughs> leave the carded ones alone. Uh, but you can play with all the G.I. Joe's you want. And 
they, they get nostalgic for the 80s, but they got nostalgic for the 80s because they lived through, because of me. I mean, they've, they've dealt with that. They're, their mom loves 80s music. I love 80s music. Um, you know, my, my son, you know, my, who's going to be 25, he's huge into Joy Division. And uh, uh, I, I told him that the one reason we would ever go to, to Cleveland, because, you know, I am not a fan of Cleveland, um, is, is I will take him to go see Nine Inch Nails. You know, nice. he wants to see that. And he's he loves, you know, the 80s industrial you know, synth you know and i'm like this is crazy because this kid had no connection to that he, he a lot of the stuff he found by himself too and he gets nostalgic for it you know i've got my older son who's more nostalgic for video games he was born in 97 um and so he's he's fascinated by that stuff now my youngest, he doesn't care. He's he, he he's like, but he he does like my Hot Wheels. So I found a box of my old Hot Wheels and handed them off to him. And I'm like, here you go, bud. Have at it. And he nice. plays with the Hot Wheels. As you, as you can see, there's a, the, the Hot Wheel Playland back here. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Is that the car yeah. wash? That is a uh, the car wash is here. This is newer oh. stuff, but oh. no, the new stuff is. Hold on a second. The new stuff is so super cool because it all interlocks. Dude, oh, so, oh, yeah. I had, a, it I had like connects. a lot of Hot Wheels as a kid, and this yeah. would have been like my utopia. Yeah, as, the car as, wash as, is as, awesome, by the way, because as, back in the day, Hot Wheels made these cars that would yep. change color if you yeah. washed oh, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The color water. They, that yeah. makes right. noise. The police department. Yeah, yeah. That's the, 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 that. Oh, but but here, th this is what. Not a whole lot of. This is what my, yeah. This this is why wow. I'm, I'm a huge nerd here. When you floor to ceiling, there's totally it is. Wow. Look at that, and this is like the back room of your store. No, this is my house. Oh, this what? Is your, oh, oh, wow. This this Dude. is my uh my finished basement. Wow. And my wow. if you look if you'd go back there in that back corner, there's an arcade. Uh, yeah, you were saying I'm yeah. I'm interested in that, man. You gotta yeah, it's, show uh, us that. There's a uh, Star Wars. There's my X Men. There's Mortal Kombat, Turtles. All that's nice. back there. Uh, then this is where the uh, I got my old movie posters for movies that no one's ever heard of. Death Stalker. Wait, 30. what movie is that? Uh, the one is Sword of the Barbarians. Uh, this one's Sword of the Barbarians. That's Death Stalker Three. Um, I do have like I got uh there's a heavy metal poster back there in the corner. Heavy metal. Oh, nice. Um, heavy metal magazine has some cool covers. <laughs> oh yeah. And then yeah. um if you go all the way back there, there is you a can show me the can I see the arcade? Uh I do not have enough mm -hmm. room here. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. Let me turn the lights on. Okay. Let me turn the lights on. <laughs> I'm uh I'm very intrigued because uh you know. I thought I thought you were like broadcasting from your store. Is that a Skeletor? I see a giant Skeletor head. I think. Uh, yeah, there's next there's, to... uh, there's uh, I have a Skeletor mask. Oh, mask. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's uh by NECA. Uh, that's as far as my cord will let me go. But uh, you can see oh, the okay. Star Wars cabinet, the Turtles wow. cabinet. My kid put stuff on it though. Uh, <laughs> then, uh, Lucky God, man. Yeah, Good for you. That's so cool. This is I'm, sick. Uh, and then there's literally there's there's Star Wars lightsabers everywhere. There's um, um wow, sorry. Uh, I, I I collect uh, oh. I, I do cosplay too. So there's a if I don't have it down here, but there's a full Spider-Man costume. Um, I have a full set of Stormtrooper armor. Uh, oh my god! Oh, wow, man. I've I've got I, uh, in case I, I ever have to go fight. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit. My goodness. Wow, dude. Very cool. I'll tell you what, next time next time we do a podcast, you have to wear the stormtrooper uniform, but you have to make sure that the camera is just way off. Like yeah, just yeah. in the wrong direction. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The stormtrooper costume, I, I bought it and then I lost a ton of weight. Oh, so now I have to like redo it and I gotta put stuff in there. Because when oh, wow. I bought it, I was probably 
close to 200 pounds when I bought it. And oh, wow. uh, right now I'm like between 165 and 170. So I've, I've oh, a ton of weight. Good. Nice. So, and then uh, I've even got, in case, uh, got. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, holy cow. We have a few posters. <laughs> yeah. Well, th 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 this is what's funny because people go, well, How do you get all this? I'm like, I own a store, man. I was like, If I had to pay cash for this stuff, I would not own any of it. No way. Yeah, man. It. Wow. And then, then stuff like, um, the Disney, I got like the, the high end, the lightsaber. Okay, <laughs> wow, very cool. Because I have no intention of growing up. Um, I'm probably one of the only people that ever has gotten the cops called on them because they're playing Star Wars with their kids. Um, Are you, that's great. Yeah, I uh, huh. was at my old house years ago. My kids were little, and um, we're sitting out there in our front yard playing with the old school plastic lightsabers. I. God, I'm gonna say this is like, no, oh, they were little, little, so geez, oh five ish maybe, mm -hmm. and um, I go and I get them all done, and I'm like, all right, guys, let's go inside, and uh, all of a sudden this cop car pulls up, and uh, he's like, what you out here doing? I was like, I'm playing Star Wars with my kids, and there's like, oh, we have a complaint, <laughs> and I'm like, about what? There's flashing lights. I'm like, okay is that an illegal i was like you know, i was like we're on our property i was like i wish that would have happened now because yeah. i would have been out there with a dart saber darth blah, 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 a darth vader lightsaber the helmet <laughs> yeah yeah just I'm stalking like, the neighborhood <laughs> yeah and uh i was like yeah i'd love to gotten the cops called on me <laughs> that's great yep yep think of the content dude <laughs> Have but, your kid towing like a radio or like a stereo behind you on a wagon and it's got the Imperial March going? <laughs> like, right. Well, what's real funny is a couple years ago, um, we had um, Trick or Treat was on during the day on a Saturday. And it was because uh, they had got called because of the weather. They had a, so I have the full Sith outfit. So I have the hood, the black and everything. And I'm walking along and I got the lightsaber and uh all these little kids are sitting there like oh my god it's a it's a sith lord all this stuff like it all of a sudden this kid comes up as darth vader and drops down the one knee and he like puts his head down i'm like oh um, my and the kid comes up. <laughs> oh my goodness awesome. and these little kids were having a blast i i've taken my kid trick-or-treating um i have the big inflatable godzilla costume i took him out in that i've taken him out in uh stormtrooper sith gear and Spider-Man the last two years. And uh the funny part about th this year was uh um I get a I get my I get a text message and it's uh Johnny from Health and he's like, Hey, I can do your interview tonight. And I'm like, I'm taking my kid trick-or-treating. And he goes, Well, I, I got an opening at eight. And I'm like, well, okay. Trick or treat ends at eight. Okay, we can we can do this. So I ran around, took him around the neighborhood. I'm like, you getting tired, bud? And he's like, yeah, I'm getting tired, daddy. And I'm like, all right, cool. So, <laughs> so I literally come back. I'm trying to get out of the Spider-Man costume, which is really hard to do. And I get out of it. I get dressed. I get down here. It's 8 o'clock. I get my interview. And I go, you're lucky. I was like, because if it, if I would have been like five minutes behind, you would have gotten an interview with me just missing the mask, full Spider-Man costume. That might have ended for a good uh, Actually, podcast, though. Yeah. Well, and he goes, he goes, oh, he goes, if I'd known that, he goes, I would have wore the plug suit from Neon Genesis, and then we would have been talking. Holy cow, yeah. That would have been that awesome, been something. Actually. And yeah, uh, I was like, oh, man, that would have been fun. I should have just worn the stupid costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, we, I, I love being, um, I, I love being a kid. Even as an almost fifty year old adult, it's it's stupid. Um, you know, I, I tell people they're like my one buddy's like, well, I I would love to game sometime, and I was like, but you know, I'm like I'm like, dude, then game, go play D and D if you yeah. want to play D and D. Go to a concert because he's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, his concerts are so expensive. I'm like that's because you went and seen uh, uh, Bon Jovi and Pearl Jam. You're gonna spend a ton of money to go see them. I was like, go, go, go find you a, a, a nice band that, that you like. And you might have to drive a little bit, but hell, you know, you're going to be more intimate 
I mean, literally, we went and seen, like I said, we went and seen um, nightclub last Saturday. I am closer to this microphone right here. I, I'm actually further away than Emily's microphone on the stage. <laughs> wow. Holy cow. And um, there's one moment where she leans real close and I'm just kind of filming and she's like, <laughs> and I was not ready for this. So I have the dumbest look on my face. My wife's laughing at me. And then what she do, she does it again, like 10 minutes later. And my wife's like, she did that on purpose that time. She's like, uh -huh. I was like yeah, probably yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Go, go have fun. Do it. Go, go enjoy yourself. Go watch anime. Go, go to a concert. Go do this, go do this. And so, and, uh, I'm 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 having living the best life I think I could because I gave up on giving a crap what other people thought I should do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what you gotta do. And I mean, you guys are doing the same thing. I mean, you are playing your music you want to play. You're out there, you know, you, like I said, you got your 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 My Hero Academia poster behind you. You're rocking Master of the Universe posters and stuff like that hell yeah enjoy it you know yeah. life's a pain in the ass and why stop enjoying things you know <laughs> yeah 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 well i'll quote frederick nietzsche uh we have art so we don't die of reality yep you know so live it live the art man yeah, yeah, yeah every yeah. day yeah and, and he's and, wearing khakis and buying mulch right yeah 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 even though you still have to do that crap but like you know yeah i know but you can like you don't have to make that the crap you like, right? You don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah. Like, I get ex excited about a tractor. I'm like, uh -uh. <laughs> my wife gives me crap because I, I'm like, I go out mow the yard, and uh, we have a neighbor who's who's super anal about it. So he's got the like lines in his yard and everything else like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's too much work, man. I'm just mowing the damn yard because I don't want to do this. <laughs> so I got to. Yep. <laughs> done. That's me. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah when 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 work becomes fun when you try to make your work fun you're like oh no you, no that's not how you're supposed to do this <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah i mean you know yeah our, our neighbor is kind of the same way he's not the super anal but like you know he's got the perfectly quaffed you know kind of piles of, of mulch and flower beds it looks it looks great but i just can't devote myself to that kind of stuff no. i just can't get into it no, I, yeah. and i and i'm not gonna fault people that enjoy yeah. it you know, yeah, that's like your you thing, but that is not my thing. You know, I I will mm -hmm. listen to the, you know, music. I will be playing video games. I'm buying new gaming books. I'll be still buying toys. And my wife's like, when are you going to do I don't know. I was like, D -d -d it'll all be Joe's one day. So <laughs> oh, bro, there you go. Right on. Let's <laughs> go to my kids. It'll be theirs. Then they got to deal yeah. with it. They're like, oh, huh. have fun. You know, it, it's it's ridiculous to give up, you know, like you said, with nostalgia, it's it's something that you love and that you remember fondly. And it's the whole, you know, um, simpler times, you know, and you know, shit, as an adult, you got to deal with bull crap, bills, you know, car payments, insurance and stuff like that. I don't want to deal with that man i just want to chill out and read comic books and watch tv <laughs> yeah yeah right right yeah it's and, funny because it's like over time you you think that people say it was a simpler time what they mean was it was simple for them in their context because they didn't have all the adult related responsibilities it's yeah. not that the 50s or the 80s were simpler it was we had simpler lives because we were kids yeah oh yeah <laughs> you know oh, oh yeah 100 percent. it was it was um you know i have friends who's you know, younger than me, who their wife is super nostalgic for the 50s. And I'm like, hey, if that works for you, good for you, man. That's not where I'm at. And then my one buddy tries to give me crap. He's like, you know, that was the era of Reaganomics and the, the Iran Contra. And I'm like, nah, dude, I didn't care. I was watching Transformers. And <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Reaganomics. Yeah. Who the hell cares about that? Man? Yeah. <laughs> not what I was worried about. Like was Rambo stopping them? No, then whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rambo. right, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's well, it's you need a neon. No, I don't know. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, we're we're um, 
all people go, oh, you got your 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 eighties and up your room, and they're like, yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna make my room like it's out of the eighties eventually, and this is what I'm gonna do with all this. And he's like, oh, you're gonna put all the neon colors and stuff like that. I'm like, no, I'm putting wood paneling on all the walls. Oh man, all right, yeah, the crappy like like plastic or vinyl wood paneling. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do yeah. all that. But yeah, I, but I am looking for the uh um carpet i'm gonna redo the carpet down here and i'm looking for the carpet that they do like uh, uh like the old skating rink or old movie theater arcade carpet that's what i'm gonna do for this oh, oh that's okay. gonna be awesome so, like the and, red uh yeah, yeah with the no like, like, yeah, yeah it's like that like color blocking oh and, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Piled. okay great yeah. yeah and then i'm gonna take uh all that stupid wow. trim that they got down i'm thinking about putting like a black lights up there so that's <laughs> great excellent <laughs> You know, it's funny, you just talked about, like, Reaganomics and everything, and people thinking of, like, the politics. Wouldn't it be hilarious if in the 80s, like, in the White House, it was a neon sign, the White House? <laughs> <laughs> On top? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know I what I mean? Like, I feel like if... if you had to pay to get in, like, just the no, bouncer. If any <laughs> was made in the 80s, they would have yeah. had that in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The White House. <laughs> the White House. <laughs> okay. You this... It, hmm. I'm, uh, uh, I, think I need to build a club called the White House. <laughs> Put the front, put the like, come in, have somebody do the front, so it looks like the White House. Oh man, it, Wait, I bet you it sucks that that's probably like illegal. Yeah, it probably. Oh, I would so do it. Yeah, I would so do it. All yeah. the staff has to dress like presidents. Yeah, all. The, <laughs> yeah. This is a fantastic idea. I'm just saying they can wear those weird bank robber Ronald Reagan masks. What else yes. can you get away with? What else? Can, the Oval Office? Can you call it that? Can you something just like? <sighs> Just to really take the piss out of the whole thing. Know, it'd be great if it was oh, all man. just like a play on it, though. Like, instead of like the White House, it's like the white, but it's like W-H-Y-T-H-O-U-Z. No, and like, be... instead of the Oval Office, you call the room the Oval Orifice. Oh, shoot. What happens in that? <laughs> exactly. What happens in that? See? We, we, don't, we don't want to talk what happens in we, that. We could be okay. we could be La Casa Blanco. <laughs> that's it there we are the there we are perfect what? just get spanish with it you're good yeah right yeah just squeak it a little bit make it a little all right great good just business go, idea then have everybody look like the the, the reagan mass from point break where you're doing <laughs> yeah yep. exactly yep yep but hey the, man investors get at me yeah uh, we will make this right. happen yeah it, it can't be as bad as detroit because you can go up there and go to l club L Club is that what it is L Club L Club yes oh. it's it's oh. L Club in in uh, um uh Mexi Town up there in Detroit and it's 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 where oh. I saw health for the uh first time and perturbated oh that's cool oh yeah okay L little tiny club and it's funny because I asked Johnny about this I was like man that place was overbooked and he, I go how did they get everybody because it's mob run and <laughs> because they're not going to shut it down I'm like oh okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, it's it's, it's probably my bro. And it's I'm like, oh, okay. That's that's uh yeah, okay. But uh then we went to a club called Smalls up there. They they, they have such great names for clubs up there. They're Smalls, L Club. Uh I just went to one in Columbus called the Rumba Cafe. The Rumba Cafe. The Rumba Cafe. And I'm like, it is a little tiny dive club called the Rumba Cafe. <laughs> cafe that's, yeah. that's an ambitious name right yeah <laughs> oh, very ambitious yeah yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. great sound that's the worst part great oh. sound in this place i mean i was like hmm because i was like oh i've been in these clubs and they're like this sounds horrible and this one, i'm like all right all right all right <laughs> yeah 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 but i was literally so far up that the speakers were behind me so <laughs> well Jeez. holy cow yeah um but uh, I, I've got to ask because we, we've talked about this on the other show, but for people who haven't done the other show, how did you go from metal to synth pop? How, how did okay. that? Well, it, okay. So you mentioned people kind of freezing their tastes at 13 mm -hmm. for music and stuff like that. Um, I would say for us and, and the things we grew up with, that's certainly true. But when the myspace era hit okay uh we were we were very enamored with the modernity of it all so uh, even though that's true that you kind of freeze it early on we 
we were really in it and we we soaked it up we loved it um and that was when it was like okay full-on metal i mean i grew up with metal guns and roses and metallica are the reasons why i play guitar um i mean you have classic rock and stuff like yeah. that but of course we, we were metalheads as well but we were really soaked up soaked up we really soaked up the 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 the, the sound of the era and um we stuck with it for a while because we saw good success. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we got a deal with uh, Tragic Hero Records. We were putting out stuff, touring. Um, we stayed with it for years after that. Uh, oh, no, a, a little while after that. And this was around, I'd say, what, 2014. We started putting a lot more synthesizers in our music. We released a couple of EPs. Then for a little bit from like 20, what, I guess 15 to 16, we went like straight on as, as synth pop as we are now almost, yeah. but a little less informed, I guess you can say. Um, long story as to why that happened, but um, we shifted back out of that once again into metal because we thought that's what we had to do. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, well, that was where you saw a lot of a lot of people supporting you. There was a lot of enthusiasm for when we whenever we came out with something heavy. Um, and we just kind of thought, oh, you know what? That's us. That's what that's what we should be doing. That's our calling, if you will. Regardless of what else we want to do, the metal will always be the mainstay. And after a while, it's just like, no, like, you know, screw it. <laughs> the pandemic happened. We went through a lot of changes like everyone did. Oh, yeah. Um, and I mean, not just because of COVID and, and the, the the environment the world created at the time, but for other reasons too, it was like, you know, life is really short, you know? And it's like, you you need to, you need to do what you really want to do. Uh, and if there's a chance, if you have a chance, you should take it. So it was just like, okay, you know, this is what we really want to do. We felt very, it felt very natural. It felt very I mean, I wouldn't say we were destined for this, but it just, it, 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 we found it more expressive. Her, her vocals, I think, are the most expressive, most passionate, most charismatic that she's ever given to the world. Um, when we were, when we track this stuff, you know, we feel like we can lean more into like the dance, the funk, the, yeah. uh, the, the, and there's a viscerality to like, hard synth bass sounds you know mm -hmm. in a similar way as metal when it was like chug 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 super tight you know that there's a mm, there's this like meatiness that you latch onto that, that just kind of you know takes you from from your feet and, uh, on up and you're just like uh and it was like hey those same feelings arise in us and i think the world has shown us that that's what other people can feel so it was like no man we can do this we can freaking do this so that was really more also you know I don't want to say bad things about metal at large because we still love a lot of, I mean, I think we mentioned it before, but like, you know, modern artists like North Lane mm -hmm. are really doing great things with metal. I mean, health, they're not straight metal, but like, you know, their contributions to heavy and raunchy music mm -hmm. are immense. Yeah. Uh, we love all that stuff, but playing the shows, you know, after a while, seeing the, the majority of the community, the majority of people are, well, Geez, I don't, I don't want to start mouthing off here, but like we kind of agreed that we stopped feeling. Oh, I guess I just want to say we fell out of love with the community. Yeah. Because we couldn't keep figuring out a way to love them. It's not that we think they're bad people, it's just there was a culture, there was a certain thing. The majority of what it is, it's a lot kind of, it's not, you couldn't, I don't know. I, if I go on record saying something, I don't want it to come back to me. Well, that, but like, it just, I, yeah. I get it. it it's it's yeah. there is a lot of gatekeeping in metal. Um, there's a lot of people. There's a lot who, of infighting for sure. Yeah, yeah. a lot of yeah. infighting because you got people like, oh, if you like this band, you can't like this band. If you like this band, you know, I, I joke around because we we were laughing about this is um, the absolute hate for like Limp Biscuit and Nickelback and stuff like that. You don't sell millions and millions and millions of records if everybody hates you. Right. Just right. admit you like it. You know, right. don't be the, you know, I'm like, somebody's like, oh, I, I listen to Limp Bizkit. I don't care. You know, screw you know, like, I'll listen to right it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, 
you know, I, I joke around. I was like, you know, like Nickelback. I go, Nickelback is a garage band slash bar band that somehow made it huge. I don't fault them. That's great. But people will talk crap about them. They'll listen to them when no one's around. You know, it's kind of like a dirty little secret. Um, I, I had this discussion a while back because I like the band Garbage, which is, you know, pop pop rock yeah. i love garbage i yeah. love garbage yes um, i was wearing my garbage t-shirt and somebody's like hey, and you're i'm like i love this band i was like they're they're like my uh uh you know um uh guilty pleasure band and then the guy goes why i went what do you mean why he's why is it a guilty pleasure you like it right i'm like yeah then why yeah. is it a guilty pleasure yeah. i went Exactly. Yeah. Why is it a guilty pleasure? Dude, right, right. I love it's Shirley Manson. Hell with that. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> Dude, n nobody can tell me that garbage, in terms of like that electronic heavy, uh, you know, somewhat aggressive, synthy rock pop kind of stuff, that garbage didn't go hard as fuck. Yeah. Like, right. they were awesome. They were dark. There was a, a, a nastiness to what they were doing, mm -hmm. but they also had these beautiful twinkly little soundscapes that they create and oh, then right. you have Shirley Manson's yep. husky yeah, right. gorgeous voice. Yep. They went hard. Anybody who's oh, gonna yeah. gatekeep on that, I'm like, get yeah. out of here. Oh, I love it. Well it, it and it's it's and then but going the other way is I've noticed with going to a lot of synth shows lately, the sheer amount of variety of people I've stood next to a guy who had to be in his late sixties rocking a nightclub shirt nice. next to a kid probably fresh out of high school you know with you know you have older couples you have younger couples you have gay you have bi you have and it's everybody and it's yeah. like you know race color doesn't matter and whatever and it's like i kind of like this vibe because there's no you know you know, I don't know how many metal shows I've gone to where I've almost gotten into fistfights or have gotten into fistfights. You know, since Joe, the only thing that's ever happened to me that made me kind of feel uncomfortable was, ironically enough, I'm up there at a health show um, in Columbus. This girl, for some reason, just like grabs me around my waist. And I'm like, the hell? I was not ready for that. <laughs> I was like, you better be glad my wife ain't here. She'd knock the crap out of you. <laughs> 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 yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I was like, okay. I was not ready. Completely off guard. I'm like, and I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I'm like, no, thank you. And I go back to watching the show. Don't touch me. Yeah, right, right. I'm, I'm fine, you know. But it's like, <laughs> that's the worst thing that's happened. Like, at all. You know, yeah, you get the super stoned people and whatever and that's just yeah. one thing you got to deal with any kind of musical show so you just kind of like eh, they're just ah push them over there they're <laughs> harmless. Yeah, yeah they're harmless um and uh you, you it's it's fun and like i said i like going to metal shows i still love going to shows um i i i've gone from everything from stoner to black metal and I don't care, you know. Actually, awesome. one of the black metal shows was one of the most mellowish metal shows I think I've ever been to in my entire life, of all things. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm under the impression that black metal fans are more of like a you know stand with their arms crossed, yeah. look menace, but nod their head ever so slightly yeah. to the to the change of the yeah. music. That's that. I don't think they're into like the moshing side of things. No, yeah. You know. Oh, that was the other thing too. Like we we very much. You know, myself I, I i do not like macho stuff i'm not into big trucks and all the you know what i mean the kind of meat and you know beer and like just like that's cool if you're into the that's what i'm just saying it's just that there's a lot of that kind of culture that i just like i said we we lost the enthusiasm for contributing to that community it just it, mm -hmm. it no longer brought us it no we we increasingly felt disconnected mm -hmm. and that's the more the more homogenized the scene seems to get in terms of pretty much everybody writing the same song and putting it respectively 12 times on every single album um it was it was starting to feel like it, it was just it was stalling out for us and we we just we wanted to stay inspired yeah it's just hard yeah. to do then so and it was harder to arrange music like you know inspired by scritty politi than it was to write the the most technical gent riff you could it, right it just after a while it was just like uh 
I get it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you move on. I mean, we did that. I mean, I grew up with metal, but we did metal for so long. I'm not saying everybody goes through those phases, but it just, it, it was like, I, th I think we've had our fill, which some people arrive at that point, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not, not even, some people are lifers. I always thought I was going to be a lifer, yeah. metal for life. But uh, I was like, no, you know what? This other, this other thing is, is really calling me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, I saw so much more of who I wanted to be being reflected back at me oh, yeah. more and more. So just like, okay, you know, and, uh, I would say I'm having a lot more fun making this because it's more of a challenge. It's more interesting. It's more complex. And I'm not relying on, uh, cause you know, I did all the screaming vocals when we were in the, the metal days. And, um, I was like, how much of that am I using as a crutch and not as, you know, Hey, we should have a, a melody that works for this. You yeah. know, it's, just, it ends up feeling like you end up leaning on too many available surfaces yeah. because they're there. Yeah. And our foray into synth pop now, especially focusing a little bit more on the 80s side of things, because when we were doing synth pop back in the day, it was a little bit more modernized, yeah, like sure. Lucia and Magic yeah. Man. It's great bands. Um, but this, you know, drawing influence from, drawing inspiration from the 80s artists that we respect, you know, Scritti Politti, Howard Jones, Duran Duran, you know, these guys were writing extraordinarily complex music. There were key changes that would just send you into orbit. Yeah. There were, you know, these interesting voicings, these yeah, melodic like changes, surprises. Yes, oh, yeah. Decisions are, yeah. are, are more, I say mature. That doesn't mean you're... The people that don't do that are, are are bad people. It just means they're more informed. It felt more immersive than it is just, like I said, chug, 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 super tight. That just gets freaking boring. And that was like what a lot of people would say to it. Remember, we would throw some more melodic stuff, ever-increasing melodic stuff, and people would be like... Where's all the screaming? Yeah, yeah, where's the screaming? Or, or stay, stay heavy, stay heavy. Stay, stay heavy. Stay out of our comment section, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, because you're not getting what you want, man. So, but the good news is all that stuff is still there. We're not getting rid of it. We haven't taken it off Spotify, probably to our detriment because rebuilding, there's a big rebuild period. Because, I mean, yeah. you know, we have songs like The Warrior, which I mean, we stand behind all, we're proud of it, but like, yeah. I love that one. That's in, that's got Spotify's algorithm thinking we're one thing, and it still says post, post hardcore in the hashtags for us, which is, Spotify's funny way of saying a, a band that was in the post-hardcore era of MySpace, and here's what they're doing now. It's like <laughs> after post-hardcore, come on. Yeah, a couple you more know. posts, you have a full oh, fence. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, a couple more posts, you have a full fence. Oh, that feels like it's a couple more posts, you have a full fence. It's a little bit like Woody Allen over here. I don't know. Not, called, not in a bad way. Can we get a bouncy thing going yeah. on? There? Oh, okay, we're, okay. Yeah. we're not going to. Magic done. Break Songs <laughs> Warrior interview. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Well, and, and realistically, if you're screaming all the time, how long of a lifespan does your voice have at that point oh if you if you do it right years yeah. and years and years and years um there are wrong ways to scream yeah. where you can blow out your vocal fold she, she, she went to melissa cross the best in the business yeah a, a lot mean, of the big screamers who i mean you know whoever spencer chamberlain uh mm -hmm. who else uh oh um huge uh, people, the guy from you know, shadows fall shadows fall guy or, i mean um, you know we she went to her so she was well informed on the right way to do it yeah um but uh if, you know yeah but eventually i think from an inspiration standpoint from a from a like almost inspiration you know uh, like a, i lost my train of thought you lost train of the fire you had for it <laughs> the fire i had for it it just was starting to die out yeah. you know what i mean yeah, i get it yeah. i get it and yeah it, yeah well it, it's you know and and it's it's the 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 absolute denial some people have in in the metal community um to admit that they still like certain music. Yeah. I, I, I was sitting there and I was listening to uh, Come Undone by Duran Duran a while back. It's and, great. And, great song. And, yeah. And I love that song. And uh, I'm literally, I pull up into the gas station. I'm listening to that. Me and my son are listening to it. A guy I've known for years is walking out. He's like, you listen to Duran Duran? I'm like, yes. Yes, I am. I'm listening to <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. But, proudly. Although, although the, I'm not gonna lie. One of the funniest things is is my 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 youngest son. Uh, he for some reason, um, total eclipse the heart freaks him out. He 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 hate he. So anytime I'm like, I, I'm in Kroger's, and it comes across the intercom. So I'm legit me. This guy walking with my 
13 year old autistic son and I'm walking around singing total eclipse of the heart top of my lungs in Kroger's and that's everyone's great like, <laughs> and like, yeah well, like, remember the time we <laughs> yeah, yeah, we heard this guy sing along to Kiri. Remember that? Yeah, Kiri by yeah. Uh, Mr. Mister Kiri, came on. Yeah, he's on. He was, yeah, he was he, I mean, yeah. fellow, and oh, it was a guy who whose hair was long enough he had to wear a net and a beard about as long as yours. Yeah, and he's singing along to the whole thing, like full voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was all there. No shame. He was just <laughs> yeah, yeah. a joy, and I'm yeah. like, you do it, man. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm walking around pushing the cart, going turn around every night. Heck <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yes, heck yes. <laughs> And my awesome. son's hands awesome. up like stop dad i'm like no <laughs> no it's, well, it's it's a beautiful thing to be self-actualized isn't it i i i, I stopped I, I i was i was a huge metal snob for years and i don't know why and my wife looked at me one day and she goes why are you that way now she goes i know what you like she goes why are you doing that and i'm like i i don't know and i'm like she goes, when we met, you listened to some pop. You listened to this. You were listening to hair metal. You were listening to this, this, this. this. You listen to everything. She's now you're like, oh, I got to be hard. You know? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this. And then, now I'm like backtracked. So I'm like, you, 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 yeah. if you go in my car anytime, my, my, I still have a CD player in my car. So there's CDs in the middle nice. console. And it's, it's, uh, there, there'll be Hailstorm, Clutch. Um, the tribute to Ronnie James Dio. Yes. Nice. Um, Fury Weekend. Yeah. Um, I think there's a Rob Zombie, but there's also like, um, oh, geez, I'm trying to remember. There, there's like a pop CD in there too, and I can't remember which one it is. And uh, the other day, a friend of mine called me up. And he goes, "Hey, because I got a record you're gonna want." I was like, "All right, what is it?" He goes, "You like Samantha Fox, don't you?" I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, I got a signed copy of Samantha Fox's album. I was like, yes, I want that. <laughs> so That's now awesome. in, my, in my vinyl collection, I have a Samantha Fox sign. <laughs> great, great, great. And I'm like, I love that stuff. Then I had to go tell another friend. He's like, who the hell is Samantha Fox? Is that like, I'm like, hold on a second. Naughty Girls <laughs> Need Love too. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's that whole the the absolute denial some people have because we were doing the um um i was tra trying to explain to my kids uh when new edition popped in people thought they were the jackson five <laughs> yeah. and uh because uh candy girl sounds just like abc oh. and oh, yeah, it really does and um that was huh. when new edition came in that was when the jackson five were on like the victory tour that that when they all got back together and so people thought they were the Jackson five and I'm explaining this to my kids and we're listening to it. And my other, one of my metal friends, he's like, ah, oh, listen to the, uh, and he goes, I'm, his wife called him out on it. She goes, you totally listen to this. She goes, you listen because every, every, anytime you went to the pool, anytime you went to the skating rink or you went to the arcade or the mall, what was being played across the intercoms eighties pop. So right. you listen to that and you enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. You know, he had Bobby Brown sign his shaver. <laughs> you know what I mean? To do the lines, you know, like new edition headlines. Dude. That was kind of bad, but I mean, you know. At least you're laughing. <laughs> it's, it's, Thanks for smiling. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> like let's let's like one day, man, I'm sitting there and this guy rocks the the best fade i have ever seen since the 80s in my shop nice. one day he has it and it, it is like this and it's ever bit that tall and i'm like dude you are awesome <laughs> i was like dude, who still sick. does that and he's this big fade man and he's like oh yeah he goes i was watching the uh, um i can't remember what movie he said and he goes like do the right thing and he's like i love that guy's hair i want that because i went and got it done like the next day i'm like oh yeah i think it's, it's a, awesome i think it's a sick look with the fade and like you know glasses those guys man like bobby brown all those like they mm, they always look they, so good yeah like the, the 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 attire was yeah spot on i gotta tell you, you know, i even thought like you know moving a little bit a little bit later you know mc hammer kind of like he that, kept that going but he made it even flashier master of ceremonies hammer yeah Dude looks cool, man. I'm sorry, but he did. I like shoulder pads. 
<laughs> Did you ever watch Attack of the Show when it was on? No. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Olivia yeah. Munn, when she was sitting there going, she goes, Mick Hammer. And he goes, what? <laughs> it's like, Mick, Mick, oh, Mick oh, Hammer? Did you say that? And he goes, you said Mick Hammer? Mick Hammer? Yeah. MC like on Hammer? <laughs> on purpose or by accident? No, oh, she screwed up. She was like, who's Mick Hammer? Yeah, it's go go YouTube it. It is a hundred percent legit. She has no idea who MC Hammer Mick Hammer. I I used to watch that with uh, what um, Kevin Rose was on. What was it? What did he used to call again? The, the screensavers. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Screensavers to, watch... to Attack yeah. the Show. I just Attack watched the... Attack of the Doc a while back, which is a documentary about it. What what a mess! Oh, right? Oh, it's a train wreck. Oh, well, yeah. what was real funny is um, it got me watching. So I went back and watched like. At the shop, we just watched the early episodes of Attack of the Show before yeah. they knew what the hell they were doing. And it's yeah. you're like, how did this go from over here, which they did not know what was going to kind of being pretty on the spot. And yeah. uh, then I'm watching it and you, you see like the decline of G4 and you can see when uh, um, uh, Adam Sessler gets fired live on air, sh stuff like that. You can catch that little mm -hmm. bit. And uh, you can always tell when Kevin's getting in trouble because he'd always take his earpiece out and like throw it behind him, and he would just continue talking because he's like, "What are you gonna do? Fire me? I'm here, you know. I'm I'm basically this network at that point." Uh, yeah, it well, was. Yeah. Um, time goes by. They bring back G four. It lasts like a year, and I posted one day, and I was like, "Hey, it's awful funny that your shows on YouTube aren't getting the numbers that my show gets on YouTube." I was like, I can totally bring you guys over to my network or something like that. That's and hilarious. Then I get these little like, boop, boop, like, you know, likes, likes, likes. I'm like, that's because <laughs> they're like, it was a train wreck. That second yeah, dude. But uh, yeah. yeah, G4 was fun. So it was Attack of the Show. I still miss that yeah. show. I loved it to this day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I remember uh, getting home after work and it would be on. Yeah. Like at that, like six, seven o'clock, something like that. And uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, yet again, it's it's the nostalgia thing. I it's why I still go back and me and my son will watch old episodes at the shop, and he loves it. And he's like I said, he he'll be twenty five, and my son is twenty. You know, everyone we still love this show, and it's all about nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, man. Uh, so what was the show with uh him and the you know Adam and, and Morgan Webb? What was that called again? The review show. Uh, uh, X play, that was just X play, right? X -play. Yeah, all the views and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 man. That brings back early two thousand memories. And, and uh, X play, Attack of the Shows. You had Code Monkeys. You had uh, then you knew it was falling apart because all they kept showing was episodes of Cheaters and Cops. That's when you knew the show. Yeah. That That's right. Wait, what was the guy? There was a talk showy guy. Um, oh crap! What was the name of that? Um, this really weird character. Um, do you remember this? It was kind of like, you know, like a late night talk show type of thing. What was that? Do you remember what that was called? Well, I, I, I'm probably getting it screwed up because I, I know that when that was ending, that's when like uh, um, Zach Galifianakis started doing the uh, the Between Two Ferns and, and Eric Andre started doing his thing. So I, I kind yeah. of got it mixed up. Well, the I host of that show said something about, you know, how Germans love poop and rubber underpants. That's a, I re, that's the big takeaway. The poop and rubber <laughs> underpants line uh, has stuck with me for some reason. Oh, and every now and then, it just like rises to the top. Poop and rubber underpants. It just. I've learned. I've learned one thing over the years of working at conventions and going. Germans are. Weird. <laughs> Germans are. Weird. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I mean. I, she knows German. Yeah, I mean, and nothing to say. But I, I just, I just remember that line. That's all I remember. The German, whether or not that's true, I hope it's true. Actually, <laughs> please, what I want to. Want I want to hear that someone, be true. You know, even if it's not, uh, you're like, yeah, yeah. I want someone to be like, oh yeah, yeah, poop rubber and baby. That's us. Yeah. I want, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. The weirdest thing. I, I hung out with a German dude one summer because he he through a guy I worked with and the only weird thing is is that dude drank his beer hot he would leave it in the trunk of his car what and drink it with a straw he like holy shit and I'm like god that oh, could get worse. Man. wow and well, a straw yeah and I'm like he's like oh he's well he hated American beer anyways but yeah he's like yeah it's 
at least it's a little bit better when it's warm. I'm like, ugh. Well, I feel like mine's super, well, I, when I did drink, it was super cold. It had to be super cold. Yeah. <clears throat> now I look back and go, oh, I drank. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Yeah. I, I wonder what boiled beer is like. Has anyone ever done oh, this? Oh, God. Boiled the beer? Hey, yeah. Who has to stink up your house? That's true. Right. Yeah. It's I don't so know what's like worse. Boiled worse beer or hot Dr. Pepper. Uh, Probably you brew coffee with boiled beer. Mm. God damn it. What would that be called? Coffee. <laughs> Fucking diarrhea deluxe. Diarrhea deluxe. <laughs> this gotta be deluxe. <laughs> I know, man. You always gotta have to add that extra little bit. Yeah. Like diarrhea supreme. <laughs> yeah. That sounds more like a Taco Bell deal. Taco Bell. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Diarrhea supreme. The diarrhea supreme. Uh... <laughs> that's right. That's right. This episode's yeah. huge in Germany. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, your German numbers are just gonna like inflate like crazy. Yeah, dude. Oh. Someone took a bike pump to those numbers. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. I, I I have one episode that for one reason out of the blue it got huge in France. Oh, really? And I'm like, what happened in that episode? I I don't even know. I don't know. It was just a normal episode, normal interview. It was nothing big. I can't even remember who I was interviewing, and um. All of a sudden, man, I, I go and I was checking out my numbers and it's like the first day, like with the first hour is like 70 some people in the first hour. And I'm like, OK, this one early on. I'm like, oh, OK. And then I don't go check it. And then the next day is my numbers are way up. And I'm like, weird. So I go to the analytics and stuff like that. And it's like where you're being watched. And it's like, you know, America, X amount, you know, kind of France. And it's like, I'm like nice the hell? and then go. the next right. episode was still kind of big in france and then i dropped back off and i'm like i need to figure out what i did in that episode to be <laughs> to be big yeah you should yeah, yeah. and it, i went back and watched the episode i have no clue what i did it'd be nice if it would like the analytics would go down to like minute by minute and be explained why all of a sudden oh this is the minute there that's why i got well no you can't you, well you can see that you know you can see there's like a most watched part have you ever yeah. seen that yeah, yeah it's, maybe it's way way back and and uh that like i said yeah. none of my other shows have ever had that kind of numbers like that from from france of all places um interesting although now i get um i'm big in the netherlands sweden area um lots of people watch me over there australia for some reason and i'm like okay well how did you find me? You know, that's like, I had a guy from India and he's like, can you do, um, can you set it up so that you do Hindi subtitles? And I went, I, I can do that. I, 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 <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever figured out how to do it, but he's like, oh yeah, I'm a big fan in from, from, uh, uh, India. And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's to relate to, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm a dude from Ohio talking to <laughs> random ass people. <laughs> I got yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, I I I have an ongoing joke that I am big in Japan, and that comes back from my days of being able to go to uh, anime conventions, and uh, I would always be there, and these little Japanese kids would always want their picture taken with me, and my buddy's like, oh, it's because you 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 don't look like anybody they've seen in Japan. You know, I always wore my black leather coat. I had, you know, long hair, the beard and everything else. Like he goes, you're, you're, you stick out. So they kind of like your novelty. I'm like, okay. And a few years go by, same thing. Japanese kids want their picture taken with them. I'm like, okay. Huh. Finally, one of the last years I went, I was like, hey, I was like, can I ask you a question? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, uh, why do you want your picture taken with me? And they're like, you're Masuda. And I'm like, who and uh found out it's a wrestler an american wrestler that goes in japan he's a deathmatch wrestler and um years go by i actually get to meet him at a wrestling uh match and i'm sitting there, I'm like hey dude i was like i found out that people in japan think that i'm you and he goes oh yeah i get it and dude, <laughs> dude's taller than me he's got like he does have the beard, but he's got like his like eyebrow pierce and his nose pierced and stuff like that. But he does wear a leather jacket to the ring. And he goes, yeah, he goes, they, you know, they they think that all white people look alike. 
And I went, oh, so it's reverse racism. <laughs> he goes, yeah, kind of. And I went, <laughs> so, that. so this started a whole thing about me being big in Japan. So there's, great. A, there's a legitimately a picture of me at like c C2 E2 year one year where I'm standing with my arm around a guy in a big Godzilla costume. So it looks like I'm standing next to Godzilla and it's like, Paul, big in Japan. And so I just keep doing all this stupid stuff. And uh, awesome. yeah, we, we, but yeah, it's all, all mistaken identity because that's why I'm, I'm like, well, I wish I was huge in Japan. If I could get people to send me cool shit from Japan, that'd be awesome. But, Dude, hell yeah. That's, did you sign any autographs too? Uh, yes, I've signed autographs. Um, but, how, but when you put your name, were they like, thanks? Like <laughs> I, just, I just scribble it really quick. Um, oh, okay. I, I've gotten mistaken for the, I want to say the bass player for Mudvayne, um, which what? is really funny. Ryan? The, 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 the kind of, he, because he was chubby face, big beard. We, no, we kind of had someone else. Yeah. No, no. Uh, um, bassist for Mudvayne, Ryan Martini. He, maybe I'm thinking. He, actually, of... he looked like more, more like Darth Maul. Uh, no, okay. Then I'm thinking uh, that she's actually guested on a track for for the for them. No, no, uh, not but for the his the bass player's other band. It's it's yeah. the one that it's the one that left and went to hell yeah with them with uh, Chad. So I'm going. Maybe... Oh, oh, the singer. No, Chad. Chad was the one with the super big beard. No, Chad's. Yeah, but the the other guy. Um, I want to say his name's Greg, but I'm I'm drawing a blank. Mm -hmm. Literally, the guitarist for Three Days Grace. But there's a picture of me with the guy from from Hell Yeah, and we're both standing at each other, looking at each other like <laughs> we're not the same dude. And, but I, uh -huh. I, had, I had guys like, "Hey man, um, you're you're that dude from the band, right?" And I went, "Dude, what if you heard was... my band, you went to <laughs> high school with me, or you used to hang out at my comic shop back in the day." Because <laughs> I I think I played two gigs with my one friend's band because their lead singer blew out his voice. And at that time I could still sing. Um, so I did a couple fill-in shows way, 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 way back in the like early nineties. Uh, then we had a, um, a band we used to just goof around with at my comic shop because I played bass, my buddy played guitar and the other guy hung out there, played drums. So we would all just like goof off. And I was like, that's about the extent of it. So I started signing autographs and I would sign autographs. I'm like, I'm not who you think I am, Paul. And I would say, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Who's the who's the kitty? You have a kitty well, behind you. We got? That that is my wife's cat, Lucy. And that is oh. her her full name is Lucy Purr. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Lucy Purr. My pain in the ass cat is somewhere and her name is maze because um me and my wife are watching lucifer when we got our cats so we got lucy purr and mazikeen maze for short so that's that's, that's, so how cute. We our cats. that's great that's great yeah, yeah. We're, we're big cat people so yeah I, I have the two cats and then i have the and i have two corgis and my wife has a mutt so <laughs> My 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 corgis are upstairs with my son because they will not let me record any with interviews. I can record my other shows, no problem. If I'm talking to anybody on here, they will not leave me alone. They're like <laughs> jumping up cute. on me and stuff. Uh, yeah. I have uh, my my both of my corgis are one's a retired rescue uh, or a retired breeder dog that we took in, and her name was was Lucy, but we already had the cat Lucy, so we changed her name to Lulu close enough so she she you know and then uh the other one is a rescue and his name was courage and oh, like that. yeah and he's our third courage because uh we had a dog named courage uh then his puppy we had a, he had a son we called him courage jr and now we have courage the, the corgi and we call him courage because he's a little turd so he's courage deterred instead of oh, the third. <laughs> That's awesome. He, he, he's the he's the reason that I get up every morning because my wife will leave and uh, my alarm will go off at nine and I'll just kind of lay there in bed and he like, hey, hey, let's go outside. You know, like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, Courage, let's get up. All right, come on, let's go. And uh, he was, um, the the people like kept, did not want him. They said he was, he was a runner. He'd take off. No problems. Lovable. He, he's he's took off out the front door once and he just stands in the front yard like i'm outside i'm outside he just doesn't <laughs> run 
and uh, he's a great dog. And uh, oh. yeah, he's he's lovable. He's a little annoying, but he's lovable. So <laughs> adorable. And, and that one is crazy. Uh, she will not stop eat trying to eat plastic, like wrappers oh. and stuff. I, yeah, that's that's apparently really common. Yeah, like because I used to have a cat, my cat Tipper, that we had her for like nineteen years. She used to lick plastic bags like a lot. So I looked it up one day after like seeing her doing this for years, and I'm like, all right, what the fuck is going on here? And apparently, it's really common for cats to lick plastic and treat and like chew on it. Yeah, I I when like if I'm bagging and boarding comics over here, I have to take the the bags when I'm not using them. I have to put them back in the box and put something on there because if not, she will get the box open and start chewing on the bag that the comic bags are in. Wow, oh, man, and I'm like weirdos, oh, crazy cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah wow holy cow so cute though oh man I, I love my cats they're they're that one's goofy my cat's pretty chill but when she wants attention she'll just lay right here and oh, one day man. i'm sitting there i have one cat on my chest one cat on my legs one dog over here one dog over here and the dog laying next to me and i'm like i gotta get up and go <laughs> to i gotta move <laughs> you will get up when they are damn good and ready yeah. I'm like, come on come on <laughs> <laughs> and and then and then 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 the neighbor's dog loves me too. The the I, I got her play with him all the time and literally today he took off and the neighbors are running after him and I just walk outside I'm like Thor come here come on buddy <laughs> and he runs right to me. I'm like here here's your dog back. <laughs> that's that's cute. Love it. I, I love dogs, but I love dogs, love my cats, so they're goofy. But um but no, you guys are are such fun to talk to. <laughs> you guys are oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you, likewise. Um, yeah, likewise. So, so I, I, I have a, a, an interesting synth question that that I, I've been wondering for since I've really started going to shows. Um, you can say yay or nay. You can answer this or not. Um, Synthwave has a huge uh, BDSM following. <laughs> interesting i am amazed at how big that is because <laughs> i did not expect that but oh man the, the sheer amount of gimp masks and collars and chains oh and stuff well gothy like stuff and well health for sure because that's yeah. their whole thing but yeah i, I don't but, know if synth wave itself but you said nightclub i mean that leans more gothy yeah Nightclub, oh, yeah, heavy. Yeah. When we went and seen Time Cop, that was heavy there. Oh, um, really? I'm yeah, surprised. I was like, okay, okay. And I'm like, is it is it the style of the music because it works good in like a dungeon? <laughs> okay, the 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 darker sounding music and the more sort of sexier sounding stuff. Like, there's a you ever you ever heard of a band called Matt Black? M A T T E. It sounds familiar. I think I've heard of them. Okay. You'll probably, you'll probably really like them. Um, yeah, they're really good. Yeah, yeah. The sort of uh, more Depeche Mode leaning stuff is uh, all about that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I yeah. Think actually have like performed at like BDSM yeah, right. shows. They like, set up, shows. Yeah, they set up the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah. like that. It's interesting. Yeah. But no, I, I had to ask if you had that issue with any of your shows because I'm like sitting there, I'm like, I'm like this guy looking like this and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't wear that outside. Um, <laughs> not here to yuck anybody's young. But I'm not, yeah, I'm not telling you. anybody you can't, but I'm like, that is definitely a uh, bedroom gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we're into some of that accoutrement, you know, yeah. uh, incorporate that a little bit. I mean, this is a uh, collar is very tame comparatively, but oh, yeah. uh, you know, um. There's the imagery is cool. yeah the imagery yeah. Stuff, yeah. Yeah, artistry and stuff like that but we don't have anything straight up like you know yeah, yeah. I don't, there's a I just wondered and... if you, you know, le legit I'm, I've I've got I've got to get this nailed down but I have an interview with not one but two dominatrixes coming up on later shows nice and, and <laughs> it's funny because people are like what's what's the one question you got to ask I'm like how do you do taxes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Because I want to know, because I know, and they get so much stuff in gift form, and they get money, and it's a lot of cash, and they live pretty extravagant lifestyles. I'm like, how do you, 
uh, how do you do taxes? <laughs> I don't know, man. Get cash, pay cash. No one's the wiser, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but you got like, you know, you know? your but, rent but is probably the, on the, the government. Record. They will find out. I had a I had a guy I used to hang out with, and he did um he back in the old days of bootlegging movies and TV shows and stuff. He was one of them guys. He had been doing this since the probably early nineties. He'd lived with his parents. He'd been stockpiling money. He went out within like a few weeks. He bought a brand new truck and bought a house, paid cash. Wow. The government showed up at his house. Like when he paid for the house, they were there wanting to know where that money came from. Yep. And so if you have anything nice, the government's going to want to know how you got that nice stuff. If you're not pulling like a 40 hour a week job, you know, they want to know. So, but, uh, Holy crap, I just realized what time it is. Um, so <laughs> I would I'm gonna I'm gonna if I had to end this here, but uh I want I love talking to you guys. Like this is so much fun. I love I love bullshitting with you guys. You're a blast. Um <laughs> you too, thanks, man. Yeah. And uh I I I I would love to have you guys as like reoccurring sporadically, maybe once a month, maybe once every like six weeks or something, pop on and just talk about dumb shit and, and fun 80s stuff and whatnot um because literally i gotta go upstairs and cook dinner i should have been cooking dinner like a half hour ago, like like 20 minutes ago but uh uh you guys are a blast um i guess tell uh where can people find you real quick uh instagram at btats band b-t-a-t-s-b-a-n-d uh we just put out a new song called closer to you check that out uh new official video on youtube uh listen 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 we're also on tiktok we're on tiktok at b test band, band as well, as well. basically yeah. b test band everywhere yeah um i gotta ask you has your tiktok been like tanking lately i'm talking well, to we the... haven't been yes but that's probably mostly because we've been con... we haven't been contributing to it uh as much as we were yeah because because i went from doing okay numbers like like um and then all of a sudden just it just, just down to yeah just, just before we stopped we did experience that yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. But we've just not really been touching it for the last few weeks it's not just me so all right um well like i said it's been a blast i love having you guys on you guys are so much fun um like i said we got a little talk about music we could talk about dumb shit or whatever and uh we can get into the serious psychological influences of <laughs> music on the person <laughs> Get in I'm these ready. deep philosophical conversations. So, and uh, because sometimes that's what you got to have. Um, we've, we've, Hell yeah. I've had people walk in the comic shop and me and my one buddy are talking uh, uh, time dilation, wormholes, all this stuff like this. And these people oh, are like, yeah. they're like, this is not the conversation I thought I'd walk into at a comic shop. I'm like, dude, at least you weren't here yesterday. Because uh, <laughs> that was a completely different conversation. So, excellent. But uh, you guys are fun. Uh, go find them. Uh, brighter than a thousand suns. Uh, go check them out. They're great. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. And you guys are awesome. And one of these days, I will get to meet you guys in person. And we can go hang That'd out. That'd be awesome. Yes. That'd be great. All right. Well, you guys have a good night. And thank you again for doing the show. And uh, I'll reach out to you again. And this might drop Monday. We'll see how it goes. Because my wife wants me to go away for the weekend. So I don't know if I'm going to edit. So, <laughs> I never get away. And she's like, we're going to the cabin this weekend. I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to the cabin this weekend. So, <laughs> nice. So Awesome, man. So you guys take care and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care, dude. Later. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>